Welcome to another edition of Showtime with Coop. Insightful BS with my Laker teammates and NBA legends. And in the house, we got Robert Parrish. Robert, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, Michael. How are you, man? You already call me, uh, already call me Michael. <laughs> I know you used to call me that little skinny black guy that played for the Lakers. Get that guy off of Larry anyway. Well, I, like, <laughs> like I was saying earlier, we didn't call you guys the Lakers. We call you the Fakers. So what's up, Faker? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get personal today then. All That's right. Okay. right. <laughs> anyway, before we start this walk down memory lane, Rob, for where we can get at each other, okay. verbally, not physically, uh, t tell us a little bit about your upbringing, okay? And, and why they call you the chief. I'm a Southern boy by nature and birth I'm from Louisiana. I, some people call me a Southern gentleman. I wouldn't go that far, but that being said, <laughs> how I got to ask your second question, uh, Cedric Maxwell, former teammate of mine, uh, blessed me with the, the nickname, The Chief, because of my love affair with the movie One Flew the Cuckoo Nest. I'm a big fan of Jack Nicholson. And and one of his, uh, in my opinion, one of our biggest of, fans that hate the Celtics, Moonjaw and the guards. That, all that being said, uh, one in my opinion, one of his best acting jobs was in his Shining, and and one of the characters in that movie uh, was the chief, and he had everybody fooled that he couldn't talk, or couldn't, uh, or uh, uh, had a speech impediment, and it turns out that. The chief had them all fooled. So when I first came to the Celtics, I didn't say much. I just sit back and observe, you know, trying to find my spot on the team and in the locker room. And then one day I just just had a just an abundance of conversation. And uh and so Seth was like, I haven't heard you talk that much since you've been there. I've been there for for like a month. <laughs> and then being there, I had been talking about the movie The, the Shining. So I guess Cedric watched it, and 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 then one day at practice, he started calling me the chief, and it just stuck for whatever reason. So there's no Indian bloodline in in, in your background. Yes, but Cedric doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Robert, that's okay. All right, all right, okay. chief, and that's what we're gonna refer to you today because that's how I see you as a Celtic. So I'm gonna call you chief, um, chief. Uh, it says early after I do my background work on a lot of people, it's kind of interesting because it's fun to know what other people, I mean, people are like on other teams as well as our team. And a lot of things I didn't know about guys that I played with, but they said you didn't like playing basketball early. Is that true? No, I didn't. Uh, Coop, when I was growing up, my, my neighbors and, and my brother, we played all sports except for basketball and hockey. We played tennis. We played football, baseball. We ran track. We did that, but rarely did we ever pick up a basketball. And then- Why, because, why is that? I mean, were you always uh, tall? No, yeah, I no, I, I didn't get a growth spurt until the end of my elementary uh, education. Like, wow. when I was going, like that summer I was going into the seventh grade when I graduated from elementary and I was going to junior high school, I grew like four inches, almost four and a half inches, almost five inches just completely stunned my parents. <laughs> <laughs> How tall is your mom and dad? Is it, are you the only tall one in your family or is this on which side, your mom's side or your dad's I'm, side? I, I'm guessing, Coop, I got it from my father. My father is six foot three. My mother was five foot seven. No one in my family is exceptionally tall. Wow. For me to come, for me to come out to be seven feet. So I always tease my pops. It was one hell of a night. So you, you produced a seven footer. You had one hell of a night. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chief, you fill it, you play, you go to high school, you uh, go to college. Where do you go to college at? I went to college locally here in my hometown of uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, Centenary College. I knew uh, that. I just wanted yeah. you to say it because I didn't want to blow the name. <laughs> it, it, it happens. Some people say Centenary. I was going to say Centennial. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, some people say Centennial. I was just going to say that. So there were some issues with your eligibility, right? And your teammates? So you guys played and didn't 
basically register any points ever. We're, we're <laughs> on the same page now. Me, it, it was a total of six of us, myself and five other players that, that class that came in with me. We all took the ACT test and they converted our scores to the SAT. And then the NCAA said that uh, if, it, if nothing in the rule book said you can't do that, it's like a gray area. But for whatever reason, I'm guessing because I went someplace unexpected in such a small school, they automatically assumed that Sid never did something, you know, under the table to get me to go there. And so the NCAA said, you got two choices. You can transfer or retake the test. So all of us being arrogant and defiant, we said we're not taking the test and we're not leaving. So it came about the probation <laughs> and, and uh, us not being recognized because we were tearing it up for four years. We didn't lose no more than three games every year I was at Centenary. We was tearing it up, if I may say so myself. Mm. So in 1976, y'all kicking ass in Centenary, the Golden State Warriors and the ABA Utah Stars they came for you. The Warriors drafted you. Uh, the Stars, I believe, drafted you too, but you chose the Warriors. Why? Because I found out, Coop, before a lot of people did, that the NBA was going to merge with the ABA. And that's why I didn't choose the ABA, because all four years of my college uh, career, I got drafted by the Utah Stars. And so being that, I found out through my agent that a merger was going to occur, so, so he recommended that I go to the NBA. So that's why I chose the Warriors instead of the ABA. You're old motherfucker, Robert. You know that? I, really? I, I, that was really? Sick, cool. I was just, <laughs> I was, what, what, what were you in uh, Pampas? My second year of junior college then. Uh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> were you in Pampas then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that little, but I was okay. So okay. who were who some of your teammates on the Warriors back then? I keep trying to think that was, uh, I know that, was that Jamal Wilkes? Was he on the team? Jamal Wilkes, Phil Smith, Clifford Ray, Rick Barry, Gus Williams. Oh, so you uh, got a chance to play with some of the greats in the game. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we, we were loaded for, for that one year. Do? Uh, we got to the, we got to the, to the playoffs and ran into your Lakers and Kareem. I tell you what, Coop, I tell you a funny story. Humbling experience for me. I did not play a lot my rookie year until the playoffs. And we played the Lakers. That back then it was best out of three. And so, and so I'm feeling real good about myself because you know I thought I was all that in college. And then I went up against Kareem. The big fell average 39.9, and I think it was like 15 or 16 rebounds for three games. Humbling, <laughs> welcome to the NBA, Coop. <laughs> Very humbling. <laughs> hey, Chief, let me ask you this. Why you picked the number double zero? Funny story behind that, Coop. In junior high school, because I that was my first time playing basketball, I was the worst player on the team. Funny story behind that, Coop. In junior high school, because I, that was my first time playing basketball. I was the worst player on the team. So uh, before the season start, started, uh, the coach ordered a lot of jerseys. The starting five got their jerseys, their numbers, and then one through nine, the second unit got their jerseys. And it was one jersey left, double zero. And that's how I came up, number double zero. And not to mention, my teammates in junior high school started calling me double nothing because I couldn't catch it, I couldn't <laughs> hold it, I couldn't dribble, coop. All I could do was just look at it. <laughs> I didn't know what I didn't know what to do with the basketball. How'd you get to be so, how'd you get to be so good then? I guess it was meant to be. That's the only thing I come up with because that first say six months, they should just kick me off the team. I'm not going to even lie about it. I shouldn't even been on the roster. Because like I said, I was just a tall person. I was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. I was just tall. That's it. Wow. And, and my junior high school coach kept, 
you know, Robert, you're that tall for a reason. You had that growth spurt for a reason. And I kept saying, I don't see what my, my junior high school coach was name was Coleman Kidd. I'm like, uh, Coach Kidd, I don't see what you see because I'm just out here in the way. And not to mention, tell you a funny story. My parents always told us never get into a fight at school. So one day in practice, one of my teammates threw a real hard pass, a hot pass, and it went through my hands and hit me in the middle of my face, gave me a black eye. So when I got home, I had a black eye, and my parents jumped all over me. Didn't we tell you about fighting in school? What did we tell you? You're grounded for a week, you know, a whole nine. Then when I told them what happened, they were like, oh, you're not grounded anymore. <laughs> Oh, Rob, I want to add to your story because that's who I am. You're okay. as dark as I am, so you don't get black eyes. So your eye must have been red, and they saw that. that I love you, Robert. Cool. I want you to know that only because cool. you don't have that Celtic jersey on. Cool. That lets you know the damage that was done. Exactly. <laughs> it was. It, it was. It was blue. It was uh, up above my eye. Was yellow, and I had some red underneath. You know, where, 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 uh, where the blood the blood was bruised, I had a little rig on it. It was like a rainbow. I, excuse my language, it, that path effed me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robert, you, you're playing with the Warriors. Oh, and by the way, back then, y'all were playing at the Cow Palace, right? Uh, uh, no, we, we was at the Oakland Coliseum. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that was Rick's early year. They played yeah, that was Rick, yeah, Rick early years. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So the Warriors in uh, 79, 80, 81 is looking at Joe Bar Barry Carroll, or some people say Joe Barely Cares, uh, <laughs> and they decide, <laughs> you're laughing at that because you heard that, did you? Uh, I've heard it before. <laughs> they decide to trade you in 1981. And lo and behold, Red Arback and the Boston Celtics come a-calling, and you find yourself in Boston. Am I right? You're right. Okay. What was your first experience there in Beantown? Uh, it was that reserved. bad? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word. Re reserved, because as you know, uh, Boston has, has a reputation of being racist and prejudiced and segregated. And so it was definitely some trepidation when I went there. But I, I must say, Coop, the... the uh, 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 the the, the rep is, is, is perception is worse than the reputation is. The perception is, is is a lot better uh, uh, than it. I'm trying to say it's a lot better than the reputation of Boston is. And and I, I, even though I've I've seen the, the the racism and the prejudice against other minorities, it wasn't never directed at me because of my association with the Celtics. But it was certainly there. I, it's just not as intense as it was back when Russell was playing back in the in the 60s, 50s, yeah. and 60s. Yeah. So the perception, what I was getting to, perception is, is definitely better than uh, is, is worse than reality, because reality have gotten a lot better. The city of Boston has really grown from from a social perspective. You know, Robert, I always say this to young people coming up because I talk to a lot of the young kids is that sports has that 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 emotional um, that that bonding where that, you know, it's hard to be or to be. Um, uh, I mean, you can be racist, but it still it brings people together. And basketball is one of the sports because you're in a building and people come together. And, you know, I say this from a person on the outside looking in. Every time we came to the garden, I don't care what we heard and things that we heard and, and uh, uh, people, but they love you guys there. I mean, they love the team. Black, they white, did. purple, green. They love the players. And to piggyback off what you said about how uh, sports – bridge that gap between the races. Music does that too, Coop. Right, you're right, you're right. When you, when you, go, when you go get some musical entertainment, yep. every ethnicity is there most of the time and everybody gets along. Yeah. So I, 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 when I was getting to sports and music, transcends religion, race, race, and politics, and religion, in my opinion. Yeah. You're listening to Showtime with Coop, 
And I'm very, very wild on this one. Ari, my producer, got this one going. We got Robert Parrish in the house and talking some insightful BS. He's not a cursor, but I am, so I'll curse a little bit for him. But Robert, we are so glad to have you here. We're at the point of my show now to where I call it Hoops Lightning Round. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you six names and you tell me a little bit of, as much as you want about that individual, okay? Okay. First one, Casey Jones. A winner on all levels, high school, college, Professional coaching, great person of character, uh, humanity. Uh, I have great respect and, and reverence for KC. I would say, uh, hopefully, I can carry myself the same way that KC carry himself with the respect and poise and dignity as a, as a human being. And that's how I try to carry myself because I feel. Such high, what I'm trying to say, I had such high regard for KC. So I try to carry myself in a like minded manner. Uh, the late Tommy Heinsohn. I didn't know Tommy personally. I just observed him from afar. But I tell you what, if there's such a thing as bleeding Celtic green, Tommy Heinsohn bled Celtic green. You know, no matter how poorly. We were playing, no matter how how badly we was out, we were, I played. Okay, Tommy always found some good, no matter what. He always shined a positive light on us. I don't know how he managed to do that, cause some nights we didn't deserve it, but Tommy found a way. Well, uh, uh, Chief, there is a thing of uh, bleeding green because I bleed purple and gold. So believe me, it's in my veins. So, okay. Uh, Red Arback. The man. One of the things I like about Red, he always told you what it was. He didn't never sugarcoat it. Excuse my language. If you wasn't shit or you played like shit, he told you, you played like shit tonight. That's why we lost. <laughs> and I respect, and I respect that, Coop. I respect that. You gotta respect that. And, and, and that's through all no that question. cigar smoke, huh? <laughs> no question. And then I'm telling, after he tell you that, Coop, then he dumps some ashes on your on your legs. <laughs> <laughs> but but you gotta respect that, though. No, you, you do, do. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Larry Little. That was my college coach, and he was two reasons. Why I went to Centenary, a local college of 700 students. Wow. I was a young father in college, well, in high school. I was a father midway through my senior year in high school. Wow. And Larry Little, my college coach. I just, something about him, the vibe he gave off, uh, what he was saying. Uh, he, was, he was all in about graduation and education, with all due respect to athletics and playing basketball. He just preached over and over about the importance of education and also he kept going on and on about how character builds you and prepares you uh, for the future. So those are the two reasons why Joe was sitting there. Good. Uh, this next guy is somebody real special to me, uh, Dennis Johnson, the late Dennis Johnson. And Rob, I'm going to tell you something. He and I were very good friends. We've known each other all the way back in high school because he's from out here. And then he went to the Celtics and I started hating him, man. Dennis Johnson. First of all, being that he had a, a good friend on the Lakers, that's, <laughs> that's brat for me. What? <laughs> Should have asked you that first and then told you that. No later. Go question. <laughs> uh, he and Cedric Maxwell were two of my favorite people on the team. And Dennis uh, kept things uh, smooth and easy, kept the tension out of the locker room whenever somebody was beefing with teammates or coaching or uh, family issues. Whatever whatever negativity was going on in the locker room, DJ was always the one that found a way to smooth it out. And not to mention, he was the catalyst to everything we was doing. With all due respect to myself and 
Larry and, and Kevin, Maxwell. DJ was the one. He, he was the engine. You know, should I, a, a better way to describe that. DJ was what was the uh, was the soul of the team. Cause Larry was the heartbeat. Yeah. DJ was the soul of the team. Good guy, good guy. And last but not least, the gentleman you just talked about, Larry Bird. Oh shit, that's that's the main shit. He's like he's like your magic, your Kareem, you know, that once in a lifetime player, uh, franchise changing player. That that uh the category that Larry was in. And not to mention, I like the way he led us as a team. He wasn't in your face, you know, that uh talking trash to you. He led by example. No matter how poorly you played, Coop, he never got on you. Only thing he only thing he would say to you, you know, try to pick it up if you can. You know, you had one of them nights but things just not going your way. He always spoke, you know, with encouragement. He never tried to put players down. And I always respected that about Larry. He never so, he was a trash talker? Oh, to other players. Okay. Oh Not my. To, oh yeah. my. Wow, give us goodness. a couple of stories of him talking trash. I was gonna say, what's oh even, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> one thing, one thing you got to give Larry Bird. He could be red hot or ice cold. He never stopped talking trash. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I got one. Cool. I, 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 he, he uh, we, great story. Their main man was Tom Chambers, and Chambers was guarding was guarding Larry. And so, in, in the jump ball circle, Larry walked through myself and, and uh, Chambers, and then came back and told Chambers, "I know you're guarding me, and I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God." Now, now think about that for a second. Think about the confidence and the arrogance it takes to make that statement. <laughs> think about that for a second. Hey, Rob, let me ask you this one. Uh, there's a story going around where Casey Jones was drawing up a play, and you guys were all in the huddle, and I guess he was having a hard time saying it. Larry told him, hey, give me the ball, and the rest of you guys get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Is that true? That, see, the story behind that, Kevin was the one that had the hot hand. But as we all know, Larry's the man, and that's Larry's team. So Larry should take the first shot. But KC was torn between drawing up something for Kevin because he had the hot hand and not offending Larry. So Larry just took the F over. Draw, draw up a play for me and give me the ball and get out of my way. And that was the end <laughs> of the X and O's. <laughs> all right, you have something? Yeah, no, I got I got one more in the um, the lightning round. Michael Jordan. Great athlete, one of the uh, great competitors. Uh, arrogant as fuck, but that's uh, that's one of the things that make makes him so great and, and makes him such a, a competitor. Uh, reason why I say arrogant to a fault because he don't think he should ever lose at anything. I'm like, first of all, you're not perfect, Michael. You're gonna lose at something. Some people just better than you are in certain things. Now, granted, you look, and Chief, like, yeah. he did light y'all's ass up for 63 now, so. <laughs> hey, hey, I reminded him of that, Coop. And I also <laughs> told him, but we bust y'all's ass, though. <laughs> oh, no question. Oh. Hey, we talking to Robert Parrish, former Celtic player, Celtic great. Uh, Robert, you get to the to, to um, the Celtics in 1981, but in 79, two great players come out of college: Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, uh, Michigan State, Indiana State. Larry goes to Boston, Magic comes to LA. They got this rivalry going again, and it's one that started in college. And 1980 comes, we win the first championship because all Magic talked about was Larry Bird, and then the Boston Celtics. So 81 comes about, you guys, you guys won in 81, right? Right. Uh, 82, we're able to beat Philly again and get our championship. 83, we thinking things are rolling and going and we end up losing. 84, we see you guys for the first time, I believe, in a championship series. Mm -hmm. And 1984 is a championship loss. 
right. that to this day, Robert, sticks with me and, and it just, um, it eats at me. It really does. <laughs> because you know what? We should have whooped y'all's ass, man. Michael, and we, we should have. It should, it should stick with you. Stick with you for what was at stake. You, we, you, we were both playing to be the best, trying to achieve excellence, trying to be the best team in the world. Hey, we got, when I went to Celtic, we got to the championship twice. I mean, five times, yeah. one and three. Those two losses still crossed my mind from time yeah. to time. Because that, that's the ultimate prize. Yeah. All your work and sacrifice and dedication and focus, that is your reward, your gratification. When you Robert, achieve, go ahead. Let, no, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Iron sharpens iron. And I know when we first saw you guys, or even back in the 80s before we saw you guys, is that Magic used to always talk about Larry Bird, but now he had included the Celtics. And every year from that year on, we talked about you guys in uh, at, at training camp, beginning of the season, exhibition season. We knew what we had to do to get out the way. Same, same here. Okay, I was going to ask you, is that the same thing you guys you, were thinking? Just like you guys focus on, on us, like, like you guys feel like the only rival or competitor that you guys were concerned about was the Celtics. We felt like the only competitors in the league that we really concerned about were the Lakers. We felt the same way. Just like you guys followed us with the standings, yep. the wins and losses, we did the same thing with the Lakers. Yep. Absolutely. And, and you know what? That's made basketball. And people talk about yes. the NBA today. It, I don't really think, Rob, and again, uh, yeah, you have the, the Bird and Mikhail and Paris and DJ, all the other ones. Uh, we had Magic, Worthy, Kareem, right. but it was players. And I, I, I see you kind of like in the same sense of me, Robert. You were that player that they weren't going to win without you. So Absolutely. that's what Come. made it fun. With all due respect to your horses, this is just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I always felt like if you and Worthy was balling, you guys are going to be a handful. You guys are going to no. be trouble. Bro, so I'm just adding you to that list with Worthy, Kareem, and Magic. I add you to that list. Now, with all due respect to Byron Scott, I wasn't all on board with him. Yeah. But because I, the reason why I say that, because he, I didn't feel like he was getting it done defensively. Yeah. He was getting, he was getting it done offensively. Now, don't get me wrong. But defensively, I felt like you made the difference. That's, and Rob, that's what wins championships. Is right. That that's that's why I put you on the list as opposed to Scott, Byron Scott. Like I said, he was tearing it up offensively. Don't get me wrong. But I'm, I've never been a fan of a one-way player. Yeah. I'm a fan of a player. And Coop, you got it done on both ends. Thank you, Rob. And that's why I put you on that list. 1984, we mm -hmm. play you guys at the Garden. We end up losing. And I'm going to tell you something, and, and I'm – Probably shouldn't tell you this, but anyway, after that game, after we fought our way through the crowd, because I love the fact that the crowd was able to come on the floor, fought our way. Uh, we were in the locker room, and it was just horrible, man. And we were sitting in there, and Magic and I were like one of the last two to take a shower. And we ended up sitting in the corner, taking a shower. And I remember this vividly. The water's running over. And, and Magic said this. He said, you know what, Coop? We'll never lose to these motherfuckers again. And I, like I was like... He, and the, but it was the way he said it. And I'm pretty sure Larry has said some things through the course. When, when your leaders say something a certain way, it makes you sit up and take attention. And, you know, we came back that next year, Rob, and we had you guys number one focus from day one. Yeah, yeah we knew there was Cleveland. We knew there was everybody else coming out, Philadelphia. We knew Detroit was starting to rear up and be the – I don't call them bad boys. I call them bad kids. Uh, we knew they were coming. And but our focus was on you guys and Robert. I was so glad when we finally got a chance to see y'all. What are your thoughts about that '85 championship series? Uh, it was a great uh, series and uh, very competitive. I feel like I always felt like Coop that year. You guys had the edge slightly because yeah. you guys had a little bit more firepower. Worthy muscled McHale, throws it away to Kareem and foul. Yep. And so that hurt us, especially against teams like like uh, your Lakers, 
because we needed that extra firepower to get us past you guys because you guys had uh, Michael Du, you had Michael Thompson uh, coming off the bench. Uh, well, well, it was me, Michael Du, and Michael Thompson coming off the bench because Jerry had went and got Michael just for Kevin McHale to, to win after that yeah. 84. So when he came, and I believe it was Larry Spriggs, Mike okay. McGee, one of them Mike, that, that kind of like add a little bit. Mike McGee, that's who I'm trying to think of. Yeah. 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 Uh, I remember you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael McGee, yeah, he was another one. That's why I say you guys had a tad more firepower yeah. than we did. And that was the difference. And piggybacking on what you said, what Michael said, when you guys beat in 85, Larry said something similar. We're going to get these motherfuckers next time. Oh, we did. Oh, but you know what? You have really six. gotten comfortable because you're cursing. Now, I love that, man. I, I don't. That's on the I don't. I don't. I don't swear often. But I, but okay. I do I'm swear. I, I, I do swear, though. You're I don't do it. passion, man. Yep. I don't do it often, but I do do it. Well, you know what? That Celtic, uh, the Celtic Lake rivalry brings out something. I'm sweating under my arms over here because I'm I'm against Chief. And you know what, Robert? I'm gonna say this to you. And of all the defensive assignments that we had, you know, you had strategies for different people. What Bird was going to do? What you were probably the most difficult one to guard because Kareem was okay defensive player, but we knew that you could get your shot off on him. So our main focus. Was to contain you, Robert. It really was. To all our championships, uh, every one. No wonder I kept getting double teamed. You guys should have been double teamed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Should have double teamed <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> that that magic me. came down on you quick. And you, you were the main focus of us because we knew. We said, you know what? If we can keep Robert's points down a little bit, maybe that might help us because you kind of right. figure that we knew you could get yours one on one, but you knew Larry and them. Larry's a good passer. If he got doubled, he's going to pass it. But right. Robert, you had that turnaround high, high shot that nobody could affect. So we knew we had to get you before you got into the motion. Uh, right. Yeah, you were uh, one of our nemesis. Uh, you were that kind of guy that was off to the side, but we knew, <laughs> always paid attention to you. For the record, I noticed it too. Almost <laughs> every time I touched the ball, I got doubled. <laughs> so anyway, Robert, 85 come. We come back in 86. Uh, Houston goes out and gets the Twin Towers, and that just was a debacle year for us because we just had all kind of problems. So they ended up with that Ralph Sampson throwing the ball over his head. The ball goes in. They show me laying on the ground. And after the game, we told these guys, you know, I went up to uh, Elijah Wine and Robert Reed. I said, Robert Reed, listen, we can't get there. Y'all kick those guys' ass, will you please? What do y'all do? Y'all sweep the shit out of them, man. <laughs> say, we, we swept them, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> y'all must have been disappointed we weren't there. Y'all beat those guys so easy. I mean, Michael, it wasn't Michael, easy, but it looked easy. Michael, we were so ready. For your Lakers, oh, oh, the Rockets didn't have a chance. Cause we we was all wound up too tight to face you guys. Yeah. So all that energy, all that anticipation, all that tension, we just let it flow all all over the Rockets. We ran through them like a laxative. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest, flow, flow. What you did? Listen, we got Robert Parrish, a legendary Hall of Famer in the house. Robert. Uh, 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 are you having any more questions for him, sir? Is is that the 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 picture behind you, Coop? Is that is Robert Parrish on in that picture? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, Robert. I'm sorry, but that's you right there. <laughs> no, Coop, no shit, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, that's about that's about at least at least he's not dunking on you like they show on the NBA TV. Doctor J dunking on me, getting out of the way. So hey, hey I'll cool, take that. Cool. Don't feel bad. Doctor <laughs> dunked on a lot of people. <laughs> Don't true. feel bad. He dunked on a lot of people and and a lot of a lot of seven footers too. Cool. Sure a lot of seven footers. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God, Robert, this has been great, man. I want to thank no you. Hopefully, if the family's doing well, this COVID and anything like that, anything you want to promote or something like that? No, Coop, I just want to thank you, man, for having me as a guest and give me a chance to bring me this and, and converse and have flashbacks about your fakers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate it, man. No question. Hey, Robert, and, listen, and, and, you got to be careful. 
you gotta be careful of those flashbacks. That might be a stroke sometimes. So lights go out or something. <laughs> isn't, isn't that the truth? <laughs> I don't want to get too excited. <laughs> hey, cool. Cause I'm a senior citizen now. <laughs> so am I, man. <laughs> Listen, Robert, thank you for this walk down memory lane. It's always nice to, you know what? I got a chance to uh, talk with Cedric, and now that we've stopped playing, I, I you know, I'll, you guys have always been friends from afar. Uh, right. Now we become even friendlier uh, until we talk about the Celtics. Then I'm gonna get ugly again, as well as you. But uh, just thank you, man, for the time today. Hopefully everything stays safe with you, brother. Uh, I may come back to you again. Uh, we're thinking about having two Lakers and two Celtics on you and Cedric, myself and somebody, maybe Michael Thompson, because he likes to talk a little bit of shit. But Robert, right. thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. And Coop, thank you, and continue success going forward. Thank you, my brother. Love you. All right, man. Love Take you care, too, Rob. Okay. All right, now.